Hi, I'm Dr. Amy French of the Delta College History Department. And today, in honor of Women's History Month, I'd like to talk to you about a group of women that are often left out of our narratives when we talk about the mainstream suffrage movement. And those are wage workers. And so let me share my screen here and we can talk about these wonderful wage earning women and, uh, and the vote and what working women in the suffrage movement achieved. Now, it, why are they left out of the movement would be probably a question that a lot of people would have. There, the thing with, you know, historians, we can only do what we can do <laughs> with the evidence that we have handed to us. And with poor groups of people, they often don't have the resources. For instance, you know, like my family members, um, for time and memorial, no, no library or no archive said, please, can we have your papers? Can we document you? Um, whereas someone like Susan B. Anthony or Elizabeth Cady Stanton, their documents were easily uh, recorded and kept for posterity. And so um, when you look at working women then, you don't have a lot of the individual stories, so you're looking more to groups. And they were often excluded from women's clubs. Uh, they faced a lot of prejudice due to their ethnicity, due to their religion. Um, and then this starts to change when a new generation of suffragists, the Votes for Women movement, becomes more inclusive. And they see that working women are a pivotal piece in getting the 19th Amendment passed and getting the vote. Um, for instance, Maud Younger is a very wealthy woman she starts this group right here, the uh, Wage Earner Suffrage League. And that's another you know, issue that working women had was that organizations such as these women's clubs, they required quite a bit of money. They are, you know, you have uh, plush, you know, uh, you have these uh, wonderful uh, pamphlets and things like that. Well, literature is expensive to print. And so with the help of people like Maude Younger, this gives working women monetary support to organize effectively, allows them to print pro-suffrage literature in multiple languages, so they're, they're reaching all these different women. Now, why do working women need the vote? Well, they're becoming more political. They're joining labor unions, and that's another area where we get where historians are able to find a lot of the tale is in the labor union documents themselves. They're striking, they're bargaining collectively for better working conditions. Where women's work is awful. They're underpaid, making about 50% of what men do. They have very long hours. It can be very dangerous. Um, you know, like here we have the China Shirtwaist Factory Fire. This kills 146 workers, but 123 of those were uh, women or girls. Uh, many of them plunged to their death because of the lack of safety put into this factory, where they are literally, at many of these factories, the employers are uh, locking them in so they don't steal um, their, you know, they're, they're not allowed to open the windows. There's it's just, I mean, there's no fire escapes. There's no, um, there's just none of the, the modern safety features that we would think of. And so this is a problem. I mean, you know, not to belabor the issue, but you know, I just thought of radium girls, the, the women who used radium to paint the watch faces, uh, on, to paint the numerals on watch faces. And they often, if you can uh, see me here, they would do this uh, pointing method where they would take the brush and then they would use their mouths to make a point so that it would make for a nice even, um, and they could make a nice even numeral. Um, and that, of course, uh, poisoned them and caused horrible. So, I mean, this is a very, women's work can be very dangerous. They're also subject to intimidation, to violence. And so, you, you know, you have a, trade unions, they're very segregated. Uh, to a, a large degree, they're you know skilled labor or unskilled labor. Um, uh, they're segregated in racial lines. Some are more inclusive, but many of them are also segregated in gender lines. Um, but some of the trade unions start supporting, regardless if they are just a man's trade union, are still supporting suffrage because they realize that they can get better working conditions for all workers. Uh, and so um, one of the groups, though, that is for women is the Women's Trade Union League. And some of its leaders are people like Agnes uh, Nestor, Mary Anderson, Leonora O'Reilly, Rose Schneiderman, and here Mary Kenny O'Sullivan, and we'll see her in a second. Um, workers are being exploited, and they're addressing things like protective labor legislation. Protective labor laws are the laws being put in place to do things like regulate uh, hours, uh, what a day's work looks like, or what a week's work looks like. 
Uh, they create safer workplaces. They set minimum wages. They require people to be paid in actual currency and that things like scrip um, and other ameliorative actions. And so, you know, women voting meant a greater likelihood that protective labor laws would be passed. Uh, it also mean that a man wouldn't have to worry about competing against a woman for a job. Uh, because why would you hire, if you were an employer and you had a job that anybody could do, why would you hire a man if you could hire a woman for half the rate? So Mary Kenny O'Sullivan, she's this ardent trade unionist and suffragist, and she sp speaks to the men, because the men are the ones with the boat, um, as to why women needed the boat. And so here's a pamphlet she wrote, uh, Why the Working Woman Needs the Boat. And just to outline it, um, she says, every year more women are going into industry because of rising costs of living. The standard of living is rising. Women can no longer contribute to the family income in the old ways, things like farm work, dairy work, spinning, weaving, you know, those kind of uh, jobs. But women's labor is cheap labor. She's pointing out we're being paid far less <laughs> and it won't be a help to the family in the long run because, you know, we can't barely bring anything in. And it could be a negative for the man who's trying uh, to be the breadwinner but is also being undercut. Women need the vote to secure equal pay for equal work. <laughs> and so, um, you know, here we are in, in the early 1900s and, and this is, you know, we're seeing this, we're seeing this in the late 1800s too, uh, that equal pay for equal work. So it's a call for working men who had the vote to use their power to secure the vote for working women and to protect themselves against the threat of cheap labor by women and children. It wins, um, including working women paid off. It created a larger, more diverse cross-class movement uh, in August 1920. In August of 1920, the 19th Amendment then is ratified and rights of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged on account of sex. And so now, um, you know, women, regardless of their race, regardless of their ethnicity, their religion, uh, their economic background, <laughs> Uh, they are able to vote as long as they are citizens of the United States. Thanks and have a great day.